Finally, a customer who maintains his car and when something starts to give any kind of signal that something's wrong, he calls the mechanic and gets it taken care of immediately. Let's get started. This is a 2014 Subaru Outback and it's actually owned by the guy that does my dental work. He's a good friend of mine and he takes very good care of his vehicles. This video is going to be about deferred maintenance and how when you keep putting things off the small damages turn into big damages and what would have been maybe a $500 repair now becomes a $2,000 repair because you just didn't feel like messing with it at the time. That's not the case on this vehicle. I actually have a list of things we're going to go over. But definitely, if you're driving, if you hear an abnormal noise or smell an abnormal smell or the check engine light is flashing or some kind of warning light is on or the steering starts to feel funny, the brakes make a noise, the wrong thing to say is, I don't have time for this. I don't have the money for this right now. If you don't have the money right now, you definitely won't have the money when it breaks even worse and costs even more to fix your car. Then you definitely won't have the money. About a week ago, Mrs. Wizard actually smelled antifreeze coming from her Maserati Levante, or at least she thought so. I checked it over and found no issues, and it ended up being that she smelled antifreeze probably from a vehicle beside hers, and the, the smell was wafting into her ventilation, and she was like, something's wrong. But the key thing there is that she immediately recognized something was going on, something abnormal, smelled weird. She also knew that it was antifreeze. She knows the smell of it. She's in a shop a lot. And she didn't say, eh, I don't have time for that. She made time for it. And luckily we found out there was nothing wrong. So I'll get the list real quick. We'll go over the concerns that the customer had. And we're going to show you some diagnostic procedures today. So here's the list, and it's actually kind of small and not very expensive. And this is the way that you keep it that way, by getting things taken care of right away. The first thing is check the wheel bearings, especially the passenger rear, and replace if defective. Because he's hearing a roaring noise, he had a family member tell him that it could be a wheel bearing, and he decided, I think I need to get that checked out. He wants to check the differential oil and replace, if necessary, on both front and rear. He has no idea when it's been done, because he bought this as a used vehicle. Check the shocks or struts and replace, if necessary. Check the serpentine belt and replace, if it's needed. And just a general look over the vehicle and make sure there's no other issues going on. Nothing on here is drastic or major, and this customer understands that he can keep it from being drastic or major by just taking care of it right now. Get it done, I want it over with. I want to drive my vehicle, enjoy it. I'm not gonna wait till it physically won't move anymore to get it taken care of. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look around the vehicle, then we'll get into the engine bay. So here's the front of the Subaru Outback, and the headlights are starting to get a little bit of a haze to them. I don't think the customer's concerned about that right now. Maybe at some point we can look into get, doing a refinish, but that's not a concern right now. Let's go down this side. It's got some fairly new tires on it. Firestone Destinations. They look to be in good shape. The paint is very nice on the vehicle. All the cladding's intact. The wheels are not scuffed or torn up. There's a sticker for Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I've actually never been there. Have you been there, Mrs. Wizard? As a kid I went once. Hmm. You were near there when we went to the Grand Tetons. Oh, okay. I didn't even know. And we get back to the back of the car, all everything's intact, no rust going on, no scratches. This car is really in pretty good shape. Same story on this side, no scratches, no dings, no dents. And same thing on the core panel here, no issues going on. Go ahead and open the hood, and here is our 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. And it's not a four-cylinder like you would think on a Honda Civic, this is like a Volkswagen Beetle the old air-cooled ones. It is an opposed four-cylinder. And what I mean by opposed engine is that the cylinders are arranged in a manner where they're laying flat and opposed from one another, two on one side and two on the other side. They're not four in a line. 
Subaru's been using these for a long time, and yes, in the early 2000s they had head gasket problems, but that's been solved by now since 2014. So that's really not even a concern on this engine. And it also does not have a timing belt. It has timing chains, so we won't be doing a timing belt service on this. One thing that's really cool about these is the oil filter is right up there, easy to get to. It's one of the things the customer enjoys. He likes to do his own oil changes, and it, it makes sense when it's this easy. It's literally right there to get to the oil filter. No leaks or anything going on up there. We have taken off the belt and looked at it, and I have a belt sitting here. I want to show you how we check it. So here we have a fairly new belt. It's off of another vehicle, but I'm just going to show you. One thing we would look for is on this flat side is any kind of cuts into the material or splitting starting to happen. On the ribbed side, I would actually bend it like this. Not, not at a 90 degree angle, just make a nice loop. You don't want to break the cords inside of there. But this will cause any cracks in the ribs to open up and show that there's an issue there. You can also roll it and look for rocks or debris, sand in, de in between each rib. And actually these pieces of debris and sand can actually punch holes through the other side, which will cause it to start splitting. But this one's just like the belt that's currently on this car is in good shape. So it does not need a serpentine belt. Okay, wizard. So what if they do find sand and debris in it? it does it mean replace it or do you just get it out? If it's just minor one or two pieces here or there, I would just leave it alone. I wouldn't even mess with it. But if I keep seeing lots of shiny sand particles in there, then I would definitely recommend a replacement. So if you're at a quick lube place and they literally in 30 seconds bring you your serpentine belt to show you it needs to be replaced, it's probably a scam. Because this belt was fairly quick to get off, but there most engines can be 5, 10, 15 minutes just to get it off and another 15 or 20 to get it back on, depending on how complicated it is. Like I said, some are really fast, some are really extensive. But if they come in in 30 seconds with the belt and say this one needs to be replaced, and then 30 seconds later the engine's running, that something's up with that. So make sure to keep an eye on that. So we'll let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around the interior, then we'll move on to some of the other items on the list. Welcome, ladies and gents. And it does look like it's lit up like a Christmas tree down there, but none of those lights are actual real. They are because we're just in accessory mode. But you can see that it does have 105,000 miles on here, so it's got a lot of life left to it. It has a simple gauge cluster there, easy to read. Okay. As we slide up to the dash, not lots of hard plastic up there, but it's all in shape, all in good condition. We do have some lovely wood trim that wraps around from the door card onto the dash itself. And again, wraps around to this side as well, made from the best plastic trees on the planet. As we move back to that center section, you'll find that it does have the itsy bitsy tiniest of little infotainment systems there, but it does obviously work and very simple to control. It does have a nice little hidey hole there. And since he uh, is a hygienist, uh, makes sense that he has uh, dental picks in there. Nothing complicated, easy, you know, to maneuver. Nothing complicated in here. It does have lovely beige colored leather seats in here that are heated. As you see in the back seat, looking great. No tears, nothing, no, there's no trouble back there. And I imagine this car has not had many people sitting back there because the, his friend does not have kids, you know, trying to eat their Cheetos and put marks on the ceiling. So slide up to that headliner again, as I said, no marks, no blemishes, no sagging, everything is in great condition. As we end up back at that steering wheel, have the lovely Subaru symbol in our center of our steering wheel. And again, simple controls here as well. Just an easy to use, reliable car. So I'm curious as to what the wizard has to, to say about the rest of our customers list. Okay, I did road test this and I did verify the, the noise on the wheel bearing in the rear. I did verify with the struts also that there's no clunking, no abnormal amount of movement or play going on. It feels, everything feels nice and tight. It, it's very nice. So the struts are very likely good, but let's take a visual inspection. I'll go ahead and raise it up a little bit.
So in a visual check of the struts, one thing we're looking for is any kind of damage or broken springs or anything like that, but also we're checking for oil seeping. So this is just dust that's collected that's normal, but anything that's come out from this rod up here, there's a seal that seals in the fluids and everything inside the strut, and when it goes bad, it'll literally lose its hydraulic oil out and it'll be wet, completely wet all through here. This one is nice and dry, so there's no issue with the strut. You can also wiggle it, and it's nice and tight. So there's the uh, driver's rear strut. You can see it's nice and dry. And also, I mean, you would move the boot out of the way, and look in there, it's also nice and dry, nothing wet. One more strut to go. And on the passenger front, it's nice and dry. It's just got dust collected on it. The fact that I can hit the dust and it actually goes airborne tells me there's no oils there. And nice and dry under there as well, nothing loose. So we'll go ahead and take a look underneath and we'll also check the differential and the wheel bearing. We'll get to that here in a minute, but we'll start here at the core support for the radiator. And we can see there is nothing wet. The hoses are all dry, there's no antifreeze dripping anywhere, the fans are intact. And amazingly, I have come across a few cars where I look at the fans and there's a blade missing or there's damage that no one even noticed. But these look fine. Here's our exhaust. There, there's the engine oil pan. Everything's nice and dry. We'll go check over here, the brakes. Brakes are about 60% life remaining. They're still good. Nothing loose there. The CV boots are not torn or slinging grease anywhere. Here is the brakes also 60, maybe even 70% remaining on those. CV boots are good. Nothing's loose. Sway bar link is good. These can be complicated on these engines because the differential oil and the transmission fluid are right next to one another. It can easily be, this one takes CVT fluid here, only CVT fluid. This one takes 75W85 up here. It's easy to drain one and fill the wrong hole. So that's something you definitely have to be mindful on the Subarus. It can get you into trouble really fast. There is a little bit open here where Junior Mint checked the fluid and level and everything. He's gonna be draining and refilling it, so that's why it's wet. Everything looks good here. Here's our drive shaft up here. Everything's good on the little U-joint. Everything's intact. The exhaust looks good. Nothing clunking around on the drive shaft. This U-joint looks good. You can see here that those little dots, this is what's called staked in. They staked the U-joint in which means if the U-joint goes bad, you buy a new drive shaft. There's no circlips or any kind of C-clips or anything like that. Taking out these will damage the U-joint, and even if you put a new U-joint in, you have no way to retain it because now the stake marks are now damaged. Look at this tiny differential, Mrs. Wizard. He's so tiny, he is awful cute. Yep. CV boots are good. We already checked the struts. Brakes are about 50%, 60% back here as well. Sway bar link is good. CV boots are good. Nothing leaking, nothing loose. Brakes are good. Sway bar link is good here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the fill plug on this rear differential. I'm just, we're just gonna look at the oil. It's a little 10 millimeter. You can see it starts to run out, but it's off. It's awfully dark. It's like a dark gray. I'm not gonna let it drip all over the place. It should be like a greenish color or clear. If I were to fill this into a clear container, it would probably be black. So we will definitely be doing services on both differentials. That was one of the concerns of the customer. He wanted that checked. The fluid is definitely dark we will be go ahead and service both differentials. Now it's time to check out a wheel bearing. Let me grab my stethoscope. 
I'm hoping you guys can hear the noise. So the first check you do on a wheel bearing is, is there any physical play? Is it like, has it gotten that bad yet? So we'll go ahead and check that. Everything's tight there. I'll check the other side real quick. Everything's tight there. So the customer hasn't let it go so long that it's physically about to fail, like fall off, which can happen. But it has started to make noise, and really, I mean, you, you can't turn it by hand and figure that out. It needs to be rolling at a good speed, and you use the stethoscope, which has a metal rod at the end, and it listens to vibrations, and usually I put the, the rod in on top of a bolt, one of the retaining bolts for the actual hub. And if there's any noise or anything going on, it'll sound like You can actually hear it through the earpiece. If there's nothing wrong with the wheel bearing, you'll just barely hear like air moving, like shh, like that. So we're going to go ahead, I'll have Junior Mate get this started up. We're going to listen to this side and compare. I'm going to try to put the earpieces to my microphone and hopefully you guys can hear it. We're, we're going to give it a shot anyway. So we'll start with the driver's side. Go ahead, Christopher. Okay, go a little faster, like 20. hear a roaring noise right now. It's a dull roar. Like so now I'm going to check this side. Okay, you can go ahead and let it coast down. Just put it in, hit the brakes, and turn it off. I don't know if you guys heard anything or not, probably not, but you could definitely hear a roaring noise coming from this one. This one also is just a little bit noisy. We may go ahead and replace that one as well, but this one is really loud, it is roaring. It can easily be heard through this, but maybe not through a microphone. But anyways, that's how I check for wheel bearings. So as we can see, there's a few small issues to get taken care of on this Subaru. And the customer brought it in just in time to where the cost will be minimal. It's not going to be cheap, but it will have a cost to get the repairs done. But the repairs will be done at a time when it hasn't damaged anything seriously. So we'll get it taken care of. He'll be back on the road and he'll be good for quite a while longer. So wizard, what happens if you don't make that repair, you know, quickly and you just let it go? What all will it damage? It can damage the, the knuckle. It can damage the CV shaft. It can do a lot of things. Actually, Junior Man, who was just helping me a minute ago, bought like a 2000 or 2001 Jaguar XJ8 with a wheel bearing that had gone out. And this person had the attitude, I don't have the money for that right now. I can't do this right now. So they drove it to the point where the wheel bearing race disintegrated and now it's eating into the actual aluminum knuckle and then they damaged that. And then they damaged the CV shaft that went to it, the splines in it. It got so bad 
that now they definitely didn't have the money to fix it and they sold it for pennies on the dollar because they, I don't know. I know that in situations people just don't have the money, but it's not going to get cheaper as time goes on. So that's something you'll have to arrange or figure out with your own finances to see if you can get it solved ahead of time as cheap as possible. Don't wait until the situation like I just mentioned where it's no longer 500 bucks but four grand to fix it. You guys have probably seen memes all over the internet or heard stories of people letting their brakes go for so long that the, it's down to metal and the metal backing plates are actually eating into the rotor and damage the rotor. And then I've seen them so bad where there's nothing left of the rotor and the piston of the caliper is actually pushed out. Here's a picture of one. I, when I see stuff like this, it's just like, this person doesn't care. They just don't give a crap. Because they could have killed themselves. They go to hit their brakes, the piston pops out, now they have no brakes. And bam, and, and they could hit someone, or I don't know. So what could have been a $150 brake job, now you got caliper, rotors, who knows what else is damaged, and now it's $1,500. And then, they, you know, why is the price so high? Because you let it go so long that the tally just kept racking up, up, up. More expensive, more damage. So the moral of this video is when things happen that are strange, noises or smells or vibrations, get it in as soon as you can and get it taken care of just to help you understand the longer that that smell or the noise or weird thing you're experiencing in the car happens, Picture this in your mind. The price is ticking up and up and up into the thousands. How long do you want to let it go? That's up to you. Another analogy is with Mrs. Wizard's Land Rover Discovery Sport that she had. She immediately smelled antifreeze and knew something was up. We got it checked out and found out the water pump was leaking. We didn't wait until the water pump's literally falling apart and causing damage. We got it taken care of right away. So that's really what should be done with your car when there's abnormal things going on. Luckily, I know somebody who works on cars. Yep, you happen to know a guy that can fix things for you. You have for quite a while, what, almost 20 years? It's getting close. That's a long time. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to service this Subaru or fix any of the other cars in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. Just like the stethoscope I just used, that's also my Amazon affiliates link. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because just like this car came in, there's hundreds more coming in after it. And there's more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.